This is going to be the advanced doors tutorial for our 2D plans. Um, before I went over regular doors and windows and so now I'm going to cover some more advanced doors. I'm going to try to do the doors that everyone's going to want first and then work towards the um, less popular styles. So I'm going to start with garage doors, um, both single and double sized. Uh, they're both done virtually the same way, but I'm going to kind of show you how to set those up in the thought process. Then we'll do sliding doors for either closet doors or exterior doors. We'll do accordion style closet doors. Then we will do double or French doors, which is two regular doors kind of side by side. And then the last one I'll do is pocket doors. If there's any other type of door you want, um, barn door or something like that, um, maybe I can add that at the end. So the first we're going to start with is our basic garage doors. Everyone will have garage doors most likely. Um, so first thing, our normal has been our four inches, but if you think about your garage doors, uh, they're definitely more than four inches from the wall. Typically this is going to be at least a foot. Um, if you're going to use it as storage space or extra room for a door to open, you'll do more. Um, I wouldn't typically go more than two and a half or three feet. Um, I'm going to go two feet on this house, so I'm going to go in two feet from the corner, and that gives me a little green dot that I can draw across. And then just like any normal door, I'm going to go across, and this is a double garage door I'm starting with first. So this is two cars can park inside this one door that opens. So I'm going to go 16 feet here. Um, 17 feet is also acceptable, but 16 feet is kind of standard. And I'm going to find where that 16 feet took my green dot. There it is. Draw that across. And then um, the height of the door. So if you think about a garage door, it's going to go up and slide in towards the house. It wouldn't go up and slide out. That would be um, really odd looking outside. So it's going to slide in. And a typical garage door is 7 feet tall. It can be 8 feet, uh, but that's pretty tall. Um, maybe a single, like I have a double and then a single, so maybe I'll do my single as an eight foot, but this one I'm definitely doing seven feet tall. And then I'm going to go over seven feet. Oh, excuse me. That should be 16 feet, since that's the size of the garage door. And then close it. And then to make the actual door itself, to kind of show that, hey, there's a door here sliding up, I'm actually going to go to the inside part of this wall and I'm going to draw in three inches. And in this case, the measurement doesn't matter that much. Uh, I do two inches or three inches. And then I'm going to come straight down and connect it. And that is my actual door that would then slide up. Um, and so when we paint our walls, we don't want this section painted. And you can paint the door um, if you'd like. So now for my next one, a single garage. Um, in between your garage doors, think about your doors at your house again. Um, typically that space is around one foot, but it can be more if you need more space or you want to be able to open two doors or put something in the middle. Or in my case, this is a really big garage, so there might be like a post in the middle of this garage. So I might give it a little extra space because of that. Um, so instead of the typical one foot that we'd see here, I'm going to go ahead and give it two feet, um, thinking that, hey, maybe there'd be a post or something. And then this is an eight foot wide. A single is pretty much always eight feet wide, um, unless you're getting like a custom door that'd be really expensive. And then I am going to check and make sure like, does this space make sense? Now this does, but my house sticks out over here and I want to make sure that this distance kind of makes sense for like when my driveway is on here and yeah it's four feet so i have plenty of space to put my driveway and not worry about my car like accidentally bumping my house um, so if you have a corner like i do here make sure your door doesn't end up like right over here and now you've only got like a foot to there and maybe five inches or something right here that wouldn't be very um smart because someone's going to drive into your house now for the height of this garage door uh, like I said before, seven foot standard, but I am going to go ahead and make this taller. Maybe you've got a big truck you're going to park here um, or something, so you want some extra space. So I'm actually going to make an eight foot by eight foot square. So side by side, this garage door would be shorter than this one. Um, 
and then I'm going to do my three inches and find that dot and draw across for the door. So there's your two options for garage doors. They can be seven foot or eight foot tall. Um, so I drew kind of both options there. Uh, next style, a lot of people will use sliding doors. This could be sliding closet doors, um, or this could be sliding outside exterior doors. Um, depending on your space, you're going to basically double our options. A lot of times they're going to be five feet because it's 30 inches or two foot six times two. So if we had two and a half times two, we have five feet. So a lot of them are going to be five feet. They can be up to six feet, three feet times two. So six feet. Um, but whatever size works in this case, in this case, it's going to make more sense for it to just be centered, whatever size that makes it. So I'm going to do my normal four inches from the corner and my four inches from this corner. And then to make my sliding door, I'm just going to find the center point of those two lines. Now, if I was drawing this from scratch, I would have measured over and made it five feet or six feet or however far. Mine happens to be five foot four, um, but I didn't really care. I just wanted it to fit in between. Um, so I'm going to find the midpoint of those two lines. It should automatically pop up and draw a line across. And then horizontally, I'm going to do the same thing. So the midpoint of this right side or left side line, and I'm going to go all the way to the midpoint of the right side line. Then we need, we've kind of cut the door in half. And so I'm going to actually go ahead and erase the bottom side of one and the top side of the other. It does not really matter which one you do. Um, I just happen to do the bottom of the left and the top of the right. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to make the other half of both of these doors by going up two inches and then closing that rectangle. And then on this bottom, I'm going to go down two inches and close that rectangle. And then it ends up with a weird line in the middle that we don't need. And there's our sliding doors. Now, some of you probably notice, well, like my sliding doors don't stick out in real life. And that's true, but we draw them that way so they're easy to see. So that's sliding doors for either closets or exterior. Um, accordion style closet doors. So if I was putting, if this was a closet, it's not, but this just was a good place for me to put my accordion style doors. Um, if I had a corner I was close to, I'd do my normal four inches. Um, and you can always do more. You could do six inches, eight inches, you decide. And then I'm going to say this is a six foot closet. And so I typed in six feet. I'm going to go find the end of that. There it is. And then for the accordion, I got to decide, are they opening? What way are they opening? So they're always going to open away from the closet. So we'll pretend this is the closet. They're going to open into the room or into um, the hallway, whatever it is. So, you know, maybe my closet would be in here like this. So that's my closet. So I'm going to open my accordion this way. Now total to the middle is going to be three feet. So I need this to be about a foot and a half, but it doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm going to angle it back in. And then on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. Try to go about the same amount. And then angle it back in. And then erase the parts that we don't need. And I have my accordion style doors. Now this is one of those places where I was talking about we would decide what side don't we need. If this was hardwood floors and this was carpet, do I want my carpet to come out towards the door or do I want my hardwood to go in towards the closet? A lot of times closets are the same flooring on both. So in that case, I'd actually even erase both sides of the wall. So then when we make our floors later, the wood floor would go all the way into both or the carpet floor would go all the way into both without me having to paint two things. If it's gonna transition to a different flooring style, you get to pick what side you delete. So I could delete this side and whatever this flooring is would come out to here or whatever this flooring is I could have go in to there. Um, I want all the flooring to be the same for this room so I would do that. Okay the next style we're going to do is our double or French doors. So I'm going to again this one happens to be four inches 
and then four inches. And then I need to find the midpoint and make a line there. Now I need to know how big this is. So I'm gonna measure and it says it's two foot six. So I'm gonna go up two feet six. And normally we just make a normal door here. Well, since we're doing this double door, I'm just gonna draw a box around this. And then I don't need this line. So I can just erase that line. And then I can go to my center point arc and connect this side. And then I can connect this side. And then the last thing we do, um, erase. Uh, this is gonna be two different flooring styles. This is probably gonna be carpet for like a, an office or something. And then this is going to be all hardwood through all these rooms up here. Um, and I'm going to have my carpet come out farther. So I'm going to cut off that side of the door. Okay, our next style, um, last style here is a pocket door. So these are those doors that kind of slide into the wall and hide. Um, and it, you need to make sure you don't use these a ton because they're not standard doors and they're kind of hard to put in. You have to really think about where to put them. So you should only put them if it makes sense. In this place, it does make sense. So if I went over our four inches, and if I was gonna put a standard door that opened here, that would create kind of a pinch point. Um, that's where people come in from my garage and go to my kitchen, and there's the stairs. So this is a really busy hallway. I don't want a door here. And if I want a door to the inside, it would take up this room. And this is like my laundry utility room, and I don't have much space anyways. So I would want a door that's gonna kind of be hiding here. So I'm gonna make a pocket door I'm gonna make it a standard three foot door. So I'm gonna type in three feet, find that. And then I don't need either side of this unless the material is different. And in this case, it will be. I'm gonna have tile on the inside and wood floor on the outside. So I'm actually gonna have the tile stop here and the wood floor kind of go in. To make the pocket door itself, we're gonna to go to the corner. I need to think about the direction it's gonna slide. If I had a three foot door here and I went this way three feet, my door is gonna stick out of the wall and that would be really weird looking. Um, no one would actually do that. So I have to put my pocket door going this way where the space actually fits. I'm gonna go onto the corner on that side. I'm gonna go over one inch, find that dot. I'm going to draw half the pocket door sticking out this way. So half of three feet is one foot six. Go over two inches for the thickness of the door. The total door is three feet. So I'm going to go this way three feet, two inches again, and then close it. So you can kind of see how it makes a door that looks like it's sliding into the wall. And that's a pocket door. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and real quick draw a barn door. Say I wanted a barn door entry into this room. This is the master bedroom. So I'm gonna go over maybe three feet, six inches here to give me an overhang. We'll find that distance, there it is. And I'm gonna go three feet for the barn door. And that's kind of the cutout. Um, I'm gonna have carpet in this room, so I'm gonna cut off that half. And then the barn door is kind of like a mixture of a sliding door and a pocket door, where I'm gonna have half the barn door here. So one foot six. I'm gonna make it um, a th probably a three inch thick. And then I'm gonna go over my three feet. So you can see how it looks like it's a door that's sliding along the wall, and that would be your barn door. Okay, so that is all of the door types, the advanced door types. If there's one that I didn't think of or that you need, let me know and I'll see if I can walk you through how to work, um, how to create one. Thanks again for your time and I hope your plans are coming out well.